Hi, my name is Dr. Oliak. I'm a weight loss surgeon in Orange County, California. Today, I'm going to show you a sleeve gastrectomy operation, and I'm going to explain what's going on as we watch it. The sleeve gastrectomy is a great operation that's quickly gaining in popularity throughout the United States and the world for a number of really good reasons. One, the operation works really well for weight loss. Two, the operation is associated with few long-term complications. And three, the operation is easy to live with. And for this reason, patients really like it. That being said, I want to stress that it is important to go to a surgeon who has the experience and the ability to do a good job. A good operation will minimize your chances for post-operative complications, and a good operation will maximize your chances for long-term weight loss success. Okay, let's get started. This is our view of the anatomy through the laparoscope. In the operating room, we, uh, we can see this on video monitors. You can see there's a tube down in the stomach. We use that tube, which is placed by the anesthesiologist, to make sure the stomach is completely empty. Here what I'm doing, I'm making an ink mark to mark um, some important anatomic locations. That first mark was made at the angularis of the stomach. That mark... Uh, is made at the pylorus, which is the muscular sphincter that, uh, that's located at the bottom of the stomach. The purpose of that sphincter is to regulate how the stomach fills and then how the stomach empties into the small intestine. Next, I'm measuring from the pylorus. I want to make a mark at five centimeters. Uh, knowing where these locations are will help me during the operation for reasons that will become apparent as we go. Another important uh, thing to mention is this the video is sped up from the normal speed of the operation so that we can watch uh, the whole operation over a short period of time. Here what I'm doing, I'm using an instrument called the harmonic scalpel to divide the attachments uh, to the stomach. Now this whole edge of the stomach is called the greater curve of the stomach and the entire greater curve needs to be freed from these attachments in order to do this operation. Now you'll notice there's a number of blood vessels um, uh, that enter the stomach. These blood vessels are all fairly large and um, it's important to um, seal and divide them well. That's what this instrument does. A couple other important uh, points about doing this part of the operation is it's important to not injure the, wall, the greater curve of the stomach with this instrument. Now that doesn't matter so much where I'm operating right now because this part of the stomach is going to ultimately be removed. But it is important as we get lower down on the stomach and um, when we're as we get uh, high up um, on the stomach. Another important point: these all these blood vessels you see enter a larger blood vessel called the gastroepiploic vessel. It's important to not injure this vessel. Um, with this instrument or uh, with the, the graspers we're using um, for exposure. Injury to the gastropoploic uh, can result in um, bleeding and also uh, can result in blood clotting issues after surgery. So the, the purpose of the ink marks at the pylorus and five centimeters before the pylorus is uh, to um, help me know uh, when this dissection is sufficient. It's also to help me know uh, where to place the stapler to start uh, the sleeve gastrectomy resection. So here you can see I'm, I'm comparing um, my dissection to the location of the pylorus. I want to bring this uh, dissection along the greater curve down to approximately one to two centimeters from the pylorus and those marks help me to determine that I've done that. Here what I'm doing is I'm continuing the dissection up along the greater curve uh, towards the diaphragm. And again, uh, it's important to divide these blood vessels well so that there's not a problem with either intraoperative bleeding or postoperative bleeding. I want to make sure that I completely see each blood vessel so I can place the harmonic scalpel in a way 
to get a good seal and division uh, to minimize the risk of uh, problems later on. So for that reason, it's important uh, to have a, um, a good assistant. Um, you really need three hands to do this operation. You can see I have a grasper in my left hand and the harmonic scalpel in my right hand. And there's a, another grasper that is right there that is uh, holding counter traction. And uh, the importance of this is it enables me to see what I'm doing. Um, it, it enables me to see these blood vessels well uh, so that I can um, divide them in a safe fashion. Now, you can see the spleen come into view here. That's the, the spleen is, is taking up the whole right upper part of the um, screen here. Uh, those are some adhesions behind the stomach. We want to also, besides freeing up the whole greater curve of the stomach, we want to free up any attachments to the back wall of the stomach. What you can see on the lower part of the screen is the pancreas, that glandular appearing uh, organ. It's important to not injure that. Um, okay, now it, you can see the spleen. Those blood vessels um, are very close to the spleen, as is the stomach. This can be a difficult part of the operation to both uh, expose these blood vessels well and to divide them well. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to um, expose each of these blood vessels the best I can before I divide them because I want to make sure I divide them well. Bleeding in this location can be hard to control. Um, and the spleen, you see the, the purple the organ there to the right, that's the spleen. The spleen is highly vascular and if we injure the spleen it can cause a whole lot of bleeding. That can be a reason for having to convert to open surgery and that can be a reason uh, if there's bleeding from the spleen to have to do a splenectomy in order to control this bleeding. So we have to take great care in this location to prevent any of those uh, issues. Now you can see the, um, the diaphragm coming into view behind the stomach there. These attachments um, that I'm dividing here are between the upper part of the stomach and the diaphragm. Now I want to continue this dissection until I can see the entire left cruise of the diaphragm. That's the muscular ridge of the diaphragm uh, that creates the opening through which the esophagus uh, travels. Here what I'm doing is I'm evaluating the patient for a hiatal hernia. Now normally there's a sphincter mechanism at the level of the diaphragm that prevents heartburn and reflux of acid in the esophagus and prevents the stomach from being able to slide up through the diaphragm into the lower part of the chest. Here I've made the determination that this patient has a hiatal hernia because I was able to slide the stomach up into the chest through the diaphragm. So this is showing the hiatal hernia repair. Now if a person has a hiatal hernia, it's important to fix this at the time of the sleeve gastrectomy operation because if we don't, the hiatal hernia can cause uh, problems after surgery. Now to fix the hiatal hernia, what I'm doing is first I'm defining the defect that exists at the level of the diaphragm around the esophagus. You can see at the top of the screen there, there's two muscular pillars. These are the right cruise and the left cruise of the diaphragm. What I'm doing is I'm dissecting the connections between the right and left cura and the esophagus and upper part of the stomach to define the defect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the defect using stitches around the esophagus. When my repair of the hiatal uh, hernia heals, it's going to prevent the stomach from being able to herniate up through the diaphragm into the chest. So here you can see the, um, the front part of the defect uh, exposed. Now what I'm, I'm doing is I'm checking for a defect behind the esophagus and it appears that there is one so I'm going to also close the defect behind the esophagus. So here I'm dividing through what's called uh, the gastrohepatic omentum. You can actually see the vena cava there on the left right there under the lobe of the liver. It's blue. That's the 
the very large blood vessel that um, that takes blood from the lower extremities and the abdomen back to the heart. Now, uh, what I'm doing is I'm opening the connections between the bottom part of the right cruise of the diaphragm and the esophagus. The esophagus is above my grasper there, and the right and left crura are below. And in a second here, uh, the defect behind the esophagus is going to come into view. <coughs> there you can there you can see the small defect behind the stomach. That's actually quite small. Often with hiatal hernias, the defect. Um, quite a bit larger than that, but nonetheless, we want to close this defect around the esophagus so, uh, so this patient won't have future issues from, uh, from the hiatal hernia. So here I'm placing a stitch to reapproximate the crura behind the esophagus. It's important that this stitch not be of the type that dissolves over time. We want this stitch to cause scar tissue in this location so it anchors um, the stomach in position without allowing the stomach to herniate up into the chest. And now I'm going to place a stitch in front of the esophagus to close the defect uh, in the front. Again, the stitch is a non-absorbable stitch. Once I finish this, we can move on with um, dividing across the stomach. Okay, next step. Okay, until this point, the operation has been all preparation for this part of the operation, which is the construction of the sleeve. The way the sleeve is made is the most important part of the operation because this is what most strongly determines outcomes after surgery. The goals are to construct a sleeve that's going to be as effective as possible for weight loss, number one, and number two, not cause problems or complications after surgery. So my goal in constructing the sleeve is to first make it small and narrow and to make it three to four ounces. The way I make it small and narrow is I position a tube within the stomach that is the diameter of what I want the sleeve to be. That tube that's in the stomach uh, is about the width of a thumb. That's the width that I want uh, the sleeve to be. Second, my goal in constructing the sleeve is to prevent issues or complications after surgery. And to avoid complications, a number of things are, are important. Um, Number one, I want the sleeve to be symmetric without areas of narrowing or areas that are too wide. Um, number two, I want the staples to be of the right size. I don't want the staples to be too tight or too loose. And number three, I want the staple line to be such that there's no kinks or twists or crosses or obstructions uh, that can impede the flow of food through the sleeve. If that happens, that increases the risks for uh, a leak. Now here you see I'm applying the stapler a second time and this stapler is positioned across where I made that purple mark at the beginning of the case. This is an important anatomic location known as the angularis incisura. The reason it's important is this is an area that can cause complications after surgery if the sleeve isn't made uh, well in this location. At the angularis, the stomach changes from a vertical orientation to a horizontal orientation. And after surgery, what can happen is the stomach can kink or twist at that location. So the purpose of that mark is to alert me to exactly where the angularis is so I can take special care 
in making the sleeve in such a way that there's not going to be a kink or a twist after surgery. Basically, the way I do that is I make it a little wider in that location, approximately one and a half widths of that tube within the stomach. A couple words about these staplers. These are great instruments. The, the staplers I'm using here are made by a company, Covidian. Um, these staplers make this operation possible to do laparoscopically. They also make the gastric bypass operation possible to do laparoscopy, laparoscopically. The way they work is you apply it to the tissue like you've seen me do here a number of times. When you fire it, what happens is the device will fire six rows of really small staples and then cut in the middle. So what you end up with is you have um, uh, three rows of staples on each side of the line of division. Here um, I'm applying the final stapler to completely um, divide the gastric remnant from the from the sleeve. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is I want to reinforce the staple line to help guard against leak. A leak is a bad complication that can occur after any operation um, in which you divide across the, the gastrointestinal tract. So what studies have shown is if a leak occurs, it tends to be at the very top of the staple line. So what I want to do is I want to reinforce the top part of the staple line to guard against leaks. Now there's a number of ways to do that. The way I prefer to do it is by stitching over um, the top part of the staple line. I think that is the most effective way to uh, help guard against leaks. So that's what I'm doing here. You can see the way that I'm placing these stitches is I am taking a bite of stomach tissue behind the staple line and a bite of stomach tissue in front of the staple line and when I pull the stitch taut it pulls the stomach wall from behind and in front of the staple line over the staple line so I'm burying the staple line. This is called uh, imbricating the staple line. Also, you can notice there's very little blood anywhere. That's um, generally the case with laparoscopic surgery. Um, usually these operations are very bloodless. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to continue um, this stitch down a little further and then I'm going to tie it and then generally what I do is I closely inspect the rest of the staple line and I uh, add more stitches like this in other areas of the staple line if I think that the staple line needs it. In this patient her staple line looked very nice and well formed so I felt I did not need to uh, place more, more stitches. Okay, I think, I think I'm coming to the end. Um, yeah, here I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie this suture. And then we're going to move on with the next step, which is removing the gastric remnant, which you can see over on the right part of the uh, picture. It's turning purple because it's, it's divided from its blood supply. Um, we have to remove that from the abdominal cavity. Okay, that's my knot. Okay, so what this shows is the gastric remnant coming out through one of the laparoscopy incisions. Now, what always amazes me with every operation um, that I do is how this large portion of the stomach comes through such a small, little laparoscopic incision. It just squeezes right through. So I'm trying to trying to show it come out through the through the little incision, which is less than an inch in diameter. 
Okay, this is the final view of the operation. The sleeve looks nice and small and narrow. The staple line is well formed throughout without kinks, twists, or crosses. And the top part of the staple line is reinforced with a stitch to help guard against leaks. It is my prediction that this patient is going to do great after surgery, both in terms of weight loss and in terms of not having problems or complications.